Good morning, I'm Kelly and today we are going to talk about closets with angled walls. So if you are uh, looking at your closet and you're getting ready to put together a design for it and you've got an angled wall in it, this is the video that you need to know what to consider and how to, how to work that out so that you don't end up with an unexpected result. Um, if this is your first time here, um, I go pretty fast through this stuff. I uh, am here to teach people how to design their closets if they don't have access to closet designers that can come over to their house and just, you know, do the whole consultation thing. So if you're either, um, you know, love to do things yourself, a DIYer, or you live in an area where you don't have access to a closet designer, this is the place to be to learn what you need to know to create your dream closet and reach your closet goals. If this again, and if this is your first time, I suggest going back and watching um, a few of the other videos to kind of get up to speed to what I'm talking about and how I how I work with the spaces and stuff. Um, because otherwise, I'm thinking it can be a little bit confusing. But number one, we always start with inventory. I've got a video on how to take your inventory. Uh, I've got a video on how to. Um, measure your closet, the specific measurements you need. Then I've got another video on how to draw that out. And then we start into um, all these design videos. So welcome to everyone. I'm going to just make sure Facebook is doing what it's supposed to do. We should be probably live by now. So awesome, I got a new iPhone too, an iPhone S Max, so I don't know if the videos will look any better, but the pictures are awesome on that thing. So um, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we go. I think you guys can see that pretty well. Okay, so when you're drawing a closet with an angled wall, um, there can be you know all kinds of different lengths of angled walls, of course, but typically when I'm in a closet with clients, and even if the wall is you know only a couple feet long, you know, and we'll start talking about what they're looking for in their closet, and they'll be you know, talking about, oh, I was thinking this here and, you know, something along this this wall would pointing to the angled wall. And most of the time it's they're doing that because they really aren't aware of how the space is going to work out once there's actually hanging clothes and things that are against that wall. So that is what I want to talk about today. Um, I call it three things to consider but it's, uh, it's probably more than that when you really break it down to it. We're gonna talk about three basic ones. So if you've got a shorter wall, this is even more um, critical, but as your wall gets longer, depending on what you're gonna do on both sides, you may still be able to use that angled wall, but it still may not be what you're expecting in the corners and at the transitions. So it's really important in a closet with angled walls to really think this through. So if you've got your inventory and you know how many fold hanging clothes you need, and let's just say for this first example, you need a lot of hanging clothes. You, you really need to maximize your hanging clothes. Maybe the space is smaller and you know you, you just need a lot of room for hanging clothes but you've got an angled wall in one corner. If you um, take a look at this, and as you know, when we're talking about, I'm gonna make this one bigger. When we're taught, this is my outside wall. This would be, you know, like a view looking, let's just say that the door of this closet is down here, you know, and maybe it opens like that, and you're walking in here. So you're walking in, you've got a square space in the back, but you've got this corner wall and then you've got another wall here. Lots of times, especially if the closet is empty, you might think, oh, well, I can put hanging clothes there and then I can put hanging clothes on this wall and then I can put hanging clothes on this wall. That is not gonna give you the, 
the uh, result that you are thinking that you're going to get. Even if you're on one of those, you know, online free, create your closet in a computer program type of a deal, you're not going to get the expect the result that you expect if if you are drawing this out. And I'm going to show you why. When you draw this out, it's going to look like this. You're going to say, oh, I want hanging here. I want hanging here. In this case, since this is such a small wall, you may, um, I'm going to change this color. You may see, it's pretty obvious that, you know, you can't use the entire wall. So you may think, well, I'll just go like this then. And I'll have hanging here, hanging here, and hanging here. But remember, in all of our other videos, when we talk about the depth of clothes, the structure typically is somewhere around 12 inches, 12 to 16 inches is your structure. And, we, and but that is actually narrower than your clothes. So when we add in here, how deep the clothes are gonna be, and remember each square is 24 inches, clothes hang out about 22 inches, and that's why this pink line is you know, slightly short of that 24 inch line. But you see here what happens, you really don't, you can't use this wall. You could use it potentially for like a belt rack, a scarf rack, um, hooks that hung on the wall if you were okay with kind of going through the clothes to put the hooks and things on that wall. But you definitely aren't gonna have room for a shelf that's accessible back there. Um, and it will probably be shallower than you think it's going to be. You may have to come out even farther to get a 12 inch shelf on this wall because remember, you know, geometry. <laughs> this is gonna be the hypotenuse of the, of the triangle and this is gonna be one of the legs of the triangle and this is always gonna be shorter than this. So in order to get a 12 or 14 inch deep shelf back here, you know, you're gonna be crossing that over your piece. We won't get too much into that math. Some of this stuff, you know, I know I'm just telling you to take my word for it, but if you don't get the math part, you'll just have to look at it visually and say, you know, yeah, I can see that that doesn't fit. So, um, so with regard to this one, get rid of that. Um, I wouldn't try to fit a shelf back here, especially if it's a shorter wall. Now we can talk about this as this expands. We'll, we'll look at this in, in one other um, way down here. But what, you, what you're what you going to have to do here if you need to maximize your hanging is you're going to have to give up this wall and you're gonna to wanna to use all of this wall and all of this wall for your hanging. Otherwise, you are going to have a huge mess because if you tried to put hanging here, you, you can see you'd actually be giving up all of this because this whole area would become a disaster zone. Okay, so if you've got a short angled wall and you want to do hanging maximized, I would suggest kind of taping that out at 22 inches. See how much space you've got left and you know this little line right here that's the space that i'm kind of talking about that's your what you can see through to that wall without moving clothes out of the way see how big this ends up if you've got a longer wall you know let's just say you've got a 48 inch wall maybe something like that and then you're coming down 22 inches on each side then you've got you know, potentially, a, you know, a space for a shelf in here. But again, if you try to do hanging in here, it's going to hang in front of these clothes. So you really need to think about the depth of what you want to do on that angled wall and what you're going to be doing on the adjacent walls to that angled wall as well. So that was our first one, both sides hanging. You'll probably have to give up most, if not all of an angled wall, especially if it's short. 
again, you can use it. You can use hooks. You can use, you know, put your belt rack there, your tie rack there, um, that type of thing. That'll work out um, really nicely. You will have to kind of dig, dig for it. Uh, but the other thing that it could be, you know, would be just a, a storage space for some longer stuff. So that is our first unexpected result if you don't think this through. So here's the next one. Let's say you do want to put hanging on that wall. Let's let's say it's a little bit longer. I've got it drawn as 48 or 24 inches, but let's say in reality it really is more like you know more like this. I'll move this one over here. Okay. If you want to put some hanging on this wall, then again, once you've thought through once you're, what you're going to do on the adjacent walls, move this so it's in the right spot. If you're going to put hanging on both of these walls and you want hanging here, then if you understood that first one, you kind of are going to understand that this one, you know, if we draw a line that's about 22 inches parallel to that, you can kind of see that your hanging section, if you don't want your clothes to overlap, is going to be, you know, something like, something like this you're probably going to end up giving up it's you know about 18 inches on each wall to get those hanging clothes to be nicely around here so that none of them are you know being covered up and mushing up with all the other ones so this example I mean, you can kind of see, again, I would suggest maybe even taking some tape on the floor, go 22 inches up the walls, and then see, and then go 22 inches this way, see how much distance you've got to leave so that you don't have overlap visually here. You could maybe stretch this a little bit if you don't mind your clothes hanging in front of these other clothes. But I think you get the idea. Decide what you want your expected result to be. And again, here's what your structure would look like on this. So, you know, if you're just drawing this out as your structure, it's going to look like you have a lot of open space. When in reality, you know, once those clothes are hanging in there, you really don't. And this is the problem. This is where the issue comes in when you're working on those, you know, um, those free things, or if you're trying to draw this out without the knowledge of the depth of clothes and that type of thing, you would think that you were wasting a ton of space doing it like this. But again, once you get those clothes in there, it's a whole different ball game of what's going to be what it, you know, what it's going to be like. Let's say in the in another um, similar example to this that you want um, you want to use the whole slanted wall for hanging clothes because depending on what's next to it, if it's a shorter wall or you know the possibilities are endless of, of course. But let's just say you know maybe this is a shorter wall and you're not going to be putting any hanging there or anything, and you want to use this entire wall so again we're going to you know bring this down to about 22 inches again the structure is going to be way back here potentially um, so then when you are working on your side walls like i said maybe there's nothing here maybe this is a really short wall you do need to consider what's on those adjacent walls though um, if this side is going to be a shelf on this side, you can probably start it right here. You've got plenty of room to do a 14 or 16 inch deep shelf. Go over that. But you don't want to start it way back here where it's going to seem like you want to start it if you were just looking at, you know, the, 
the the structure part of this and not where the clothes are going to hang this is where the clothes are hanging this is the structure you want to make sure that you leave enough clearance for those clothes to hang before you start your shelf if it's going to be folded or i mean hanging clothes then you're gonna need even a little bit more space on that back wall. Because remember, those are gonna come out 22 inches too. So if we draw that line, you know, you can see that you're gonna to wanna to be, if we continue this out, you're gonna to wanna to be right in this area. And again, this is the clothes hanging out. Whoops. And this is the structure. And you can kind of see, you know, it's it, this 18 inches, 15 inches. This is kind of sort of where you're probably going to end up if it's a 45 degree corner. Some corners are very odd and that isn't even going to, there's no kind of standard for what happens. Um, like I said, a closet designer that does this every day knows what to look for. I just want you to be aware if you're trying to lay this out yourself of the things to consider when you're doing it. Okay, so that those are the two examples where I guess we've already done three, but the the main two where you're going to be putting um, a lot of hanging clothes in the closet. If you were planning on using your angled wall for a shelf, then let's use, th that's the one that I've got right here. Okay, so this is my shelf that I've drawn in. And what you wanna consider again is what you're doing on the sides. So if you were just going to do some shelves on the sides, you'd still wanna leave a little bit more space or some unless you've got a cabinet maker who can who's doing this for you and you can do these two ends and have this one be done after to be the exact size these corners are not going to end up perfectly probably they could they can be very close but um, you want to make sure that you don't have a lot of overlap on this from this side because again if you make this the same length if you make this panel the green one the same length as the black one the green one's going to stick out farther over the black one you're not going to want that result so that's why you want to back it off a little bit so that they look you know more even and again if you've got a custom closet designer or a company coming out they can fill that in so it looks seamless but with something that you're going out and purchasing, just so you know, those, those angles are not going to line up perfectly. So if you're putting a shelf over here, again, you, you just leave a little bit of space. If you want to do hanging close to the side, this is really where people get a, a result that is totally unexpected. And that is that the clothes, again, the, the structure is going to look like it's hanging out to here. So it's going to look like those come together pretty good in the design or the drawing, probably. But in reality, when the clothes are hanging in there, they're going to hang way out here in front of this shelf. So you're only going to see the portion that's in between here. Not horrible if you've got a tiny closet and you need to, you know, take advantage of every inch. But just so you've thought this through and you get that, you know, your, your result is not going to be a shelf that you can see very well if you do, if you have hanging clothes on the sides of a shelf in a corner. Again, the real trick here is going to be, you know, take some tape, determine what your depths are on all three sides lay that out and then you'll be able to see very easily where you need to start and stop these sections and then you can determine your priorities if your priority is hanging which way gives you more hanging if your priority is a shelf um, you know then what what needs to happen on each edge especially if you are hoping for some kind of shelf that's going to be 
you know, use to display things or something that you're going to be using every day. You don't want to be digging through these clothes to get to it. Okay, so I think that's probably enough um, brain injury for one day. I know this is a lot of like thinking geometrically. So I'm not going to talk a whole lot about any more concepts, but I want to show you a couple examples of some actual closets um, to kind of sort of hopefully bring this home a little bit a little bit better. So the first one was actually a closet with two angled walls. And again, this is the floor plan from the top looking down. So here's the door. We've got our two angled um, walls and then the back wall, side wall. So if, if um, there was also an obstacle on one of these angled walls, which was an access panel. So if you can see that access panel there, when you've got plumbing access panels, you really have to pay attention. You may never have accessed them before in the past, but you may have to in the future. And so um, if you can, my suggestion would be to work with it. Try to put something there that makes sense and leaves you know, the access so that you can get to it fairly easily. And in this case, she had quite a few dresses, so that worked out you know, very well. So since I chose to, you know, work with that wall and leave her dresses there, this ended up being a hanging space. So, um, you know, some of you might be thinking as you're looking at this design, well, you let, you know, that I left a lot of empty space, but here is what actually is going to happen. The dresses, oops, the dresses are going to hang out in this area right here. Okay, so these drawers, you do not want, you know, she would not want these drawers over here and having the dresses hitting the drawers, not being able to open or shut the drawers without having clothes getting stuck in them. So this is, you know, where this becomes very important to really think this through. How much space is there going to be? There's a lot of things that you can do in this space, you know, belt racks, tie racks, um, hooks on the wall, hooks on the panel. You know, you can get through those clothes to get through that stuff with just your arm. So it's not uh, terrible. You can still use that space for uh, if you've got something tall that you store, or maybe you could just throw your uh, carry-on luggage back here, something like that. Lots of uses for it. Um, so don't feel like you're, you know, you're giving up that space. You're really making the space more usable. Um, so that's what I did with that side. And then on the other side, you know, it, we've got a door. So this one had several op obstacles. We've got a door here. So as you're walking in the door, you know, you'd be, this would be your path of walking in the door. So you're coming in here. This right here, if I tried to do hanging clothes right here, they would actually be hanging in front of the door, number one, which I absolutely detest. Number two, it would make this corner, you know, really kind of tight to get back into. But most of all, um, it just, you would be walking into clothes. And I really don't like that, especially if, if you're going to the trouble to make this beautiful and nice, don't do that. Um, so at any rate, that worked out perfectly as well because we were able to put a shoe shelf in there. This is only going to stick out 12 inches. She's going to have plenty of access to get back to her dresses back here. And um, it's not going to go in front of the door, so it's not going to be obstructive that way either. Now, this particular closet, if you're wondering about the rest of the design, um, they were moving, downsizing, and so it was very important to have some storage. So this section here um, could have potentially been um, some hanging, but she really needed the storage, so we decided to make it shelving. With an adjustable system, if somebody else moved into this uh, condo and they wanted to change this to double hanging or more dress hanging or whatever they wanted to change it to, it would be adjustable to that. Um, that's why I really advocate getting, you know, putting in systems with holes on the sides where the shelves are fully adjustable because then you can, you can really 
um, utilize this to meet your needs even in the future if things change. Okay, so that's an example of um, kind of a longer angled wall that did work out and we left enough space and she loves the closet. Um, the next one, I've got some 3Ds so you can kind of see. Again, it's kind of a similar closet. Um, you've got a door here, an angled wall back here that's about 42 inches. And like I said, from just looking at this, it looks like there may be quite a bit of wasted space here and here and here. But let's draw in where our clothes are going to hang and see what happens. So this is where we are. Oh, you know what? This, this one isn't for this closet. I wanted to show you guys that one too. But So let's just look at these three for now. So this double hanging section here, this is actually this wall, the back wall, C right there. This is D and this is B. So you can see in this case, this wall um, was long. She had something that she wanted to store back here. That's why there's a slightly a little bit more room here. But again, I don't like to cut off the corners. So when my guys went out and installed, they may have installed this. They probably did as, as much as they could without it going to be overlapping. If you're figuring that out and you can figure it out with tape, it'll be a lot better. And then you've got the double hanging back here. You can see there really isn't any extra space here at all. By the time the clothes are all hanging in here, this will all be filled in. Okay, and then this is this corner and that'll be filled in with clothes as well. Then we've got dresses and we've got drawers at the front. Okay, so there's another, and again, all of this is design, is developed from her inventory. So your layout may look different. I just want to show you what you have to consider when you've got, you know, shelves and shelves and hanging. Uh, so you know how to put all of those together. This one, it was a little bit bigger closet and I, I didn't want to overwhelm too much, but you can see here's a, a longer wall back here. Again, it's with hanging. So there's plenty of space so that the clothes, oops, <laughs> that was an unexpected result, so that the clothes can hang in here and not hang in front of these shelves and totally obstruct them. Okay, um, guys, if you have any questions about any of this, leave it in the comments or message me directly. If you're working with a closet that has an angled wall, Blue tape is going to be your friend. Your measuring tape is going to be your friend. Remember your standard measurements. Your shelves are going to probably be 12, 14, or 16. Your clothes are going to hang out 22 inches. Work that corner out so that you don't have overlapping and you don't have an unexpected result. We want you to get the result that you were expecting when the closet is installed. Thank you so much for joining me on a Saturday or whenever you're finding this. I'm working on my website at kellylevine.com, so hopefully I'll have some of these resources up there, um, some quick study guides so you can um, you know, have access to what I'm talking about here. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Take care.